the pandemic restrictions has limited people from doing actual access to uh, on-site gambling and restrictions in casinos and so forth. So overall, gambling has decreased uh, in the United States. But among those who have problems, problem gamblers and pathological gamblers, there's been an increase in that problem. And there's an increase actually in um, the incidence of people who gamble, uh, who meet medical diagnostic criteria for that condition, pathological gambling. I'm going to explore why it is certain people's brains have these anomalies, which uh, result in them experiencing pathological gambling and how the, this develops and, uh, and what the criteria for that development is. So I hope to really, uh, the goal is to diminish the shame, diminish the guilt, diminish the uh, all of the misinformation about pathological gambling and with the treatment, the brain does heal in the brain's ability with its plasticity and its ability to uh, form new connections allows it to become uh, highly functional again. I think the, the most surprising and fascinating thing is that despite, um, despite a lot of research that validates that these are treatable and manageable conditions and that the treatment for these conditions really result in tremendous benefits to society, to the family and to the individuals who are involved, that we continue to have less resources for treatment. And what's inspiring is to be able to help people understand uh, their value. A lot of the great things we've accomplished in our society and continue to accomplish are made possible by people who are in long-term recovery. And we need to inspire or attract more professionals to get involved in this field.